things, much like all life, but only we, looking at the moon, can share what we've seen. All we can say is that the capacity for language and the utilization of this capacity, as far as we know, goes back unchanged throughout essentially all of human history. We have absolutely no record of language 25,000 years ago, but we do have records of symbol systems that are so complex they could only be maintained by modern language. There are neural centers for generating spontaneously numberless hypotheses about the facts of life. When we are lucky enough to find a direct match between a receptor and a fact, there is a deep explosion in the mind. The idea suddenly enlarges, rounds up, bursts with new energy and begins to replicate. At times there are chains of reverberating explosions, shaking everything. And the imagination, as we say, is staggered. And sooner or later, out of the small bits and the steadily growing masses of information, uh, suddenly a uh, sense begins to be made. And a new observation about nature is, is made. Baudelaire said that man lives in a forest of symbols. And now I think we've, we've turned a lot of the trees into paper and surrounded ourselves with 40,000 books a year and a million scientific articles. And the world of nature that surrounds us now is no longer the kind of information from photosynthesis or pheromones, but the information coming from books and consciousness and print and electronic information, so that the nature that surrounds us now is information. And the world we live in is really a world almost becoming totally a world of culture. The real surprises, which set us back on our heels when they occur, will always be the mutants. We have already had a few of these, sweeping across the field of human thought periodically, like comets. Bach was able to do this. 